so. Right. Nobody copy it. It's his idea. That's mine, guys. <laughs> uh, so before we get to some questions from the audience, uh, another show that I absolutely loved was uh, you got to share the screen with uh, Breck and Meyer, and I absolutely love your. Who? <laughs> Who's that? Breck and Meyer. I Sorry. I think you guys had such incredible chemistry, and I just wanted to know about your time working with him. Uh, yeah, Breck and. He's still my buddy. We, 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 no joke, we, we talk every week. Um, we've been trying to get Franklin and Bash remade in some capacity for over six years. And it's one of those things that we were very close to doing something. Um, and it's just, the, the problem is that the people that own it know there's something valuable there. They just don't know how to do something with it. And they're just dragging their feet. And so, We've said, you know, we want to do these maybe two hour movies, we can put them up on Netflix or Hulu, wherever. Um, kind of like what Psych does. Uh, and um, we just want to work together. We, we love working together. Um, we're currently developing, we just pitched something last week. Uh, last year we, were, we, we developed a show for ABC that didn't make it to pilot phase. Um, but we're constantly looking to, to work together. Um, we have ideas of how we can take the characters of Franklin and Bash, just reinsert them in another genre, and, uh, and make it work, you know, obviously change their names and things like that, because we, we just genuinely like each other, and we feel like we have a great chemistry, and we wanna, we wanna work together, so. Hopefully something comes of it. Um, like I said, we just pitched something last week to, uh, to Disney Plus. So, um, you know, most, most of the things that we pitch is, because he's a fantastic writer, um, I don't know if you guys were aware, but there were times on Franklin and Bash where he would write the episode and I direct it. And uh, you know, we'd like to we like to continue doing that. Did your love for directing come from you know being obviously in front of the screen, or was that something like as you started getting into the industry, you're like, hey, I think that's something I want to do as well? Yeah, I wish I'd been pushed a little harder uh, years ago to direct, um, but I think when I started having a fascination for it and wanted to pursue it was during my NYPD Blue days. And that was in 2001, 2000 maybe. Um, and Steven Boschko, who created that show, he was the showrunner, uh, had a rule that actors on his shows did not direct, or, or they did not direct NYPD Blue. And uh, pretty much Steven did an amazing job. He's, he's you know, was, uh, he passed away, um, unfortunately, but he, uh, he was like a father figure to me. And he had this great way of compartmentalizing things on set where actors acted, writers wrote, producers produced, and everyone had a role. And you always, like, he, he just was a, a master at, at, at making sure that the, the, the sets were safe and creative and everyone felt heard and you just had to worry about your job. Um, and so, yeah, he just had this rule, you, you just did not direct. And then from NYPD Blue, I went on to Commander in Chief, which was his show as well. And then I went to do Raising the Bar, which was his show as well. So for almost a decade, I was not able to direct. Um, and then once I went to Franklin and Bash, I just waited too long, because we only did 10 episodes a year. And uh, they had some great directors, and I never really thought of it until like the final season. I was like, you know, I, I want to direct one of these. Um, indirectly, I was directing, you know, the show because you're just you're just there and you, you, you have a revolving door of directors that come in and they, they ask you like what have you done and um, what would you like to do and so I, I I didn't really kind of pursue it as hard as I should have. I would, that probably a regret of mine is that I didn't pursue, pursue directing harder. All right, so if it's okay with you, we do have a microphone for whatever questions you guys may have. So, oh, okay, all right. Julie is rushing over there. <laughs> is the mic on? Julie, you were supposed to run down the escalator and like do this whole thing. Oh my God, you're so rude, Julie. <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> she was, Julie came to the table today. She said she was gonna run down the escalators and, and do a Zach attack. And by the way, that's not a thing. A Zack Attack is not a thing. Zack Attack was a band? Yeah. Oh. oh, you're a Zack Attack fan. That I, I remember. That's right. <laughs> What's your name? 
All right, I don't know if this microphone is on in front. If we can get the microphone on, please. I have to project a little. Hold, please. <laughs> Live show. You doing okay? So far, so good? Yeah, what up? Okay, we got it. Um, my name is Holland. Hi, Holland. Um, my question was, um, what was your favorite episode to act in when Saved by the Bell? Um, hmm. Uh, you know, what, what, what's your favorite episode? Um, I don't know. I don't know. You don't have one? I probably feel the same way, to be honest with you. I really don't have one. I don't remember a lot of the show. I mean, there's a podcast that I did with uh, the guy who created Zach Morris' Trash, uh, Dash McDriscoll. We have a podcast together. Yeah. How many people know about podcasts? Uh, not as many as I'd like, but uh, thanks for the support. Um, but, uh, we talk about this because my memory of those years and, and doing it is very limited. But what I remember the most is the experience of it and not necessarily the work. I think it's pretty much true for anyone. It's like, when you go to work, you don't, you don't remember the, the ins and outs of what you did that day. You might remember who you went to lunch with. Um, and that's kind of how my memory works. Uh, so for me, I don't really have a favorite episode, but I have favorite memories of like, when we went to Hawaii, or we went to Palm Springs. Um, anytime we were on location, it was a departure from our normal. Um, and so, oh, the beach episodes. I, I really like those too, because we just had, I mean, it was, it was just like spring break for us every day, being on Santa Monica Beach with our friends, and then um, we did a month of beach work, and then we did a, like a month of studio work. Uh, but that was a departure from the normal, so, if you, I, I guess, like with each episode, that would be my answer, yeah. Thank you, Holland. My name is Emily, and uh, my question is, since you've been in television for so long, what is your favorite set that you've worked on? Because you've had a variety of experiences, so. Uh, three just like popped in my head. So say, um, NYPD Blue was an amazing set. Um, and I won a lot of awards for it because uh, we just had amazing set designer. And it bums me out that I don't remember his last name. I believe his first name is Richard. Um, but for NYPD Blue, I had to do research for that role. And I spent a lot of time in New York. Uh, one of the executive producers was uh, a detective for 25 years on the NYPD. And so he took me around and we saw crime scenes and we, you know, went to doors and uh, did interviews and, and things like that. And I would walk into these places and some of them were, were kind of nightmarish inside. You know, it was just, it was, it was pretty radical. And I remember walking onto the set of some things on NYPD Blue and having that same feeling like, wow, like you did not know you were on a set. So those sets on NYPD Blue were some of the best. Uh, probably the most fun was Pitch when I got to play a baseball player and we'd walk on to like Petco Field, you know, or, or Chavez with the in, in Los Angeles or, uh, you know, where the, where the Giants play in San Francisco. That was some of the coolest stuff because, you know, you're going into the locker rooms and you're going into the batting cages underneath the stadium. Um, some, of the, some of the coolest times. And then just recently, The Passage. Uh, we did some really cool things on The Passage uh, where they housed some of the where the inmates as it were, um, some of the really cool sets that I, I couldn't believe we were spending that much money on a TV show. And that's some of the times why they don't get picked up because that show was really expensive and we didn't have the viewership. Um, so th that's probably my top three. Awesome, thank you. And that's, that's a really great question because I think a lot of times People, you know, disregard how much a set really makes the show as well, and, and a lot of times they don't get the credit that they deserve. So yeah, and it really helps us as actors when we walk on a set, and it's it's that you're, you, if you're immersed in something, it's so much easier to uh, portray, you know, a character and, and, to, and to act. Um, I mean, it's our job just to, you know, it's, a lot of these movies nowadays are just green screens, and you're not seeing that, but to, to actually walk on a physical set. 
uh, is, is such a treat for, for the actors. So they, they deserve, a, you know, and, and it really is everyone on the set, and, and it, it's a collaboration, but everyone on the set has a role. There's over 200 people usually on a, on a crew, and everyone has a purpose, and if everybody's doing their job, um, it just makes for, uh, you know, a very easy creative experience that we could all be proud of. All right, what's your name? Scott. Um, watching one of my favorite shows, it was like, wow, Mark Paul Gosler's on here. Um, and I was just wondering, how did you become to work with the Weeds show and the, the team with that? How did that kind of come up? That was just kind of crazy to see. You how did the, wh which one? Weeds. Oh, Weeds. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, did anybody, who's, who saw that? <laughs> Yeah, that, that was a tough one. Uh, so, uh, I did a play with um, Justin Kirk okay. in 2009. Uh, it was a three-person play. Julie White, Justin Kirk, and myself. It was called The Understudy. And uh, in New York, the director of that was Scott Ellis. Scott Ellis was one of the main directors on Weeds. And, you know, Justin Kirk and the whole family there. So. Uh, Mary Louise Parker lives in New York, came to the play a few, uh, a few times, I think, is her relationship with Justin. We became friends and uh, would go out to dinner afterwards and um, cut to 2010. It was just one of those things that I got a call from Scott Ellis and he said the actor who was supposed to do that role, and I, I don't remember who it was and it really doesn't matter, but found out how much nudity there was going to be and uh, didn't feel comfortable. He's like, but you've shown your ass, you're fine with it, right? And I'm like, sure. Uh, I didn't know to that extent. Uh, that was one of the most radical um, nude scenes I've ever done. Because I did a few on NYPD Blue, uh, but those were so tame compared to what we did on Weeds. Um, Weeds was, was uh, I remember going out to dinner with a friend of mine afterwards and just feeling like, I needed to have therapy after that, after that day. Uh, Mary Louise Parker is amazing, but she basically uh, um, was a choreographer for that entire thing. She's like, you're gonna do this, and you're gonna do this, and you're gonna do that. I'm like, well, how am I gonna do that? She's like, figure it out. And so that was, uh, that was a fun day on set, but it was one of those that I was like, man, um, yeah, I, I don't know if some of this stuff was legal that we were doing on set. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Are you guys clapping for me or for the person that asked the question? Yes. Mutual? Yeah. What? Mutual? Yeah. Mutual <laughs> like, yeah, the person asked the question, he answered it. Yeah. What's your name? You don't have to clap, come on. We're, we're beyond that. We're, we're, we're... You're saying we don't, we'll clap to not clap. You're, you like that, yeah. I love that. Hi, my name's Hans. This is at your... <laughs> Sorry, we're just having fun now. What? This isn't your first time being in Kansas City. No. Uh, your first time being here was in 1992. That's right. And what was... Well, you say 1992. Somebody said 94. Was I also here in 94? I don't remember here in 94, but you were here in 92. And I was here in 92 with the... Uh, you went to Worlds of Fun. Worlds of Fun, that's what it is, yeah. It's... What is your most memorable time during that trip? And which ride did you like? You know what? Somebody showed a picture of me at World of Fun, and I don't know if they're here. Uh, they... Cameron, was his name? Cameron, you here? No. Nope. Cameron, we need to talk, by the way. Yeah, so Cameron has a photo of me up on stage, and he talked about it. He remembers the questions that I was asked and the ones that I answered. And I have no recollection. <laughs> Zero. Even over the dinner we had and all that stuff. I had dinner with you? Yes. <laughs> What, what, where do we eat? After the dating game. The dating game? Yeah. <laughs> the dating game at Worlds of Fun. Yeah. With you and Tiffany. Tiffany was there too? Yes. Oh. Wow. What were we doing? Like, why were we there? Uh, promotion for Q104 and Channel 62. But it was for the show? For yes. Because they were taking your show in syndication. Oh, right. Because... Yeah, because 92, we ended the show in 94. 94 right. was the last year. And but you went into syndication in 92. We went into syndication. I thought we went into syndication later. I thought it was like 96 that we went into syndication, but 
we went in, okay, so 92, we went into syndication. The show didn't really take off, honestly, until syndication because we, got, we had a broader audience because you had to watch the show on Saturday morning. And if you didn't wake up to watch the show at whatever time it was, it was you know, one show a, a week on Saturday mornings, um, you, you sort of missed it. There was no like DVR or anything like that. But when syndication hit, the show would air after you came home from school, uh, as well as like throughout the day. So a lot, we had a broader audience. Tell me about this dinner. <laughs> Uh, there was a dating game. Okay. All right, so... Did we date? <laughs> well, unfortunately, no. <laughs> uh, no, I was on Tiffany's panel, so... Good man. So, but we went to a dinner afterwards. They had a lot of chicken and all that stuff. So, so wait, dating... So there was a panel, so there was like... There was a few... Boys, I would imagine, not men. Well, it was like the old been... dating game, you know? You had three contestants you had to choose from. She had I had three... to choose them? Yes, and you should, yes. This is so wrong, what we're talking about. <laughs> I feel like this would never happen today. This is awesome. <laughs> so who did I choose? What did, what, did I choose well? Um, the girl I ran into afterwards said no. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I wish I remembered these things. They sound like they sounds like great stories. <laughs> it's amazing. Is there, is there an ending to like the, the night? Is there? Well, afterwards you went on roller coasters. So I was I did. wondering what roller coaster you liked the best at oh World's Cup. Good. I, I couldn't even I couldn't even tell you that I went on a roller coaster. It's amazing. Um, where's the biggest mall in the in the in the United States? What? Minneapolis, that's right. So I, I don't remember being there, but I do remember I've been there. Uh, but it's weird that I don't remember Worlds of Fun. I don't understand why I don't remember these things. But this is why I had that podcast, because we would have people on, like you, and they would tell us about these experiences, and it was just, it was just a fun way to kind of relive through your <laughs> experiences, because I don't remember mine. So I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Can we clap? But, I think we should clap on that one. That was, yeah, that was, that was a good one. There's my man with his shirt, Don. Absolutely. Yeah. Man. I got a bad, the interesting thing is I have a really terrible memory. Because I don't remember things like that. I just remember things for a short period, and then once they're done, like, I'm never going to remember you again. <laughs> <laughs> just being honest. I mean, this is one of those things, like, I remember Julia, and then Don, like, people came yesterday, I've already forgotten you. But today, I remember Don. My life is complete now. So. <laughs> Please don't say that. <laughs> It's really not that. Yeah. So my question is: the original pilot to Miss Bliss, completely different cast. Yeah. And then you go to you all, and then you go to Save by the Bell. You get carried over. Some other people don't. Was that experience jarring, or how did that just seeing that happen prepare you for the, I guess, the business, the ebbs and flows of the business? Yeah, one of the sucky things in our business, and I'm sure it's with other businesses too, is being fired. You know, and it felt like those kids were fired off of a show because they didn't come with us. I don't really remember, here we go again. I don't really remember like how I felt about it. Um, I think now I would feel more awful than I probably did as a, as a teenager. Um, but it's also weird, like we were in Indiana and then all of a sudden we're in the Palisades. But it didn't really feel like, oh, Miss Bliss was a carryover to Saved by the Bell. It just felt like Saved by the Bell is a completely different show, right? Uh, Zach Morris talking to the camera. I remember, I, I remember reading the script for the first time um, and thinking of it in my head, playing that character. And I thought, this is, I'm playing Ferris Bueller, which was one of my favorite movies growing up. And uh, yeah. And so I remember going, oh, I get to play a version of Ferris Bueller because I'm talking to the camera. Uh, but yeah, being fired from a show or not carrying over, that's, that's, that's the worst. Um, I did a podcast with Michael Rosenbaum who was on Smallville recently, and I, we were talking about being fired. And one of my first experiences being fired was on a, uh, a commercial for some toy company. And um, I don't know why I was fired, they don't really give you a reason, but I was fired, and Paul Walker, the, you know, who was the other blonde kid at the time in the industry, got, the, got my role, and my consolation was uh, just a box of toys that they gave me. Um, but even, I remember back then, I was like, no one needs toys. Um, <laughs> But yeah, being fired sucks. But yeah, the, the, it was cool working with those other with that other cast. And 
Um, but uh, yeah, I, f I feel bad now that that happened, but it happens. Thanks, Don. Don't clap. <laughs> It was a good question. We don't have to clap at good questions. We'll clap at the end for all the good questions. A collective clap, all right. Collective clap. <laughs> What's your name? Kayla. If you, um, if you could have put Zach Morris in any situation for an episode, what would it have been? Uh, back then or now? Uh, now. No. I don't know, it'd be kind of fun to like put Zach Morris like on Game of Thrones or something. <laughs> Walking Dead. He tries to time out as you know as a zombie and doesn't work because <laughs> they're dead. Um, I don't know. I don't really think of that. Like Zach Morris and Breaking Bad would be kind of cool. Heisenberg. They're, they're, it's the same person actually. Zach Morris and Heisenberg. It's the same exact. It's just an older version of Zach Morris. That's why he's trash. You should ch do you check out the uh, Zach Morris is trash on YouTube. You should. It's amazing. I, I really, because I love Dashiell Driscoll, and he's actually one of the writers on the new show on, on uh, Peacock, um, Saved by the Bell. He's actually one of the writers, and he's just a fantastic guy. But um, yeah, what would you have liked to have seen Zach on? That's good. Like a, a dream sequence of like a horror show would have a been horror good. Show, like yeah. The Walking Dead, like you said, that yeah. would have been very cool. Yeah, I agree. Some, you know, Jason Blumhouse film, Zach Morris in there. There, there's still time. I can still put the wig on. He doesn't remember anything. I know. Thank you. Said Game of Thrones. How was your Doc Racky? Yeah, not good. Not good. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hold up. That was such a good show. My God. So good. Hello. Hi. Uh, what is your favorite Zach Morris and Kelly Kapowski moments? You know, uh, we talk about this on the podcast, but there's not a lot. I mean, honestly, like the chemistry between Tiffany and I, and Tiffany and I are really good friends still. I, we're actually all good friends on the, on the show, but Tiffany and I are, are probably the closest. Uh, the age of our children, I really like her husband, Brady. Uh, he's a good dude, he's a beer drinker, and we, we hang out. So, we, out of all the cast, I probably hang out with Tiffany the most. Um, and growing up, we really liked each other too. But it was so like, it was almost a sibling relationship. The chemistry between us on the show, I'm not a fan of. And I know I'm gonna probably upset some people, but I feel like the chemistry between AC Slater and Jesse is way more intense. And, right? I mean, they just like, when they kiss, that's a real kiss. I'm like, yo, what's going on there? Um, <laughs> Tiffany and I, and just Zach and Kelly, I just feel like they're always like, trying to get together, and then they bounce apart, and then they try to get back together. Uh, but he doesn't treat her that well. You know, there's times where I'm like, Zach's, I mean, again, we go to the Zach Morris of Trash. There's times where Zach and Kelly, I'm like, dude, that's not a way to treat her. Like, I'm gonna show her, I'm gonna go date her, and she'll wanna get back with me. By the way, that never works, guys. <laughs> Don't do that. Like, if you wanna date the girl, go date that girl. Don't date a girl to get a girl. Uh, but yeah, so there's a lot of moments like that. And then, you know, the, the breakup scene where she calls him Jeff. I mean, you gotta be kidding me. We, we recently watched that show, and again, listen to the podcast. I mean, that, that was some low ass, you know, like she calls me Jeff. Are you kidding me? And at the end, we're sitting on a table and we're crying. I mean, it, it, it was, ugh, hated seeing that stuff. Um, <laughs> so there, that's what I think of the Zach and Kelly. Uh, but I love I love Jesse and Slater, and I think that their their relationship. And Slater's such a nice guy, like he's such a nice guy. Like whenever he, whatever he would do with you know, he'd call her Mama, have like pet names for her, and she had pet names for him like Pig or whatever. And, you know, it was just, it was cool, and they were they they really liked each other. Where I felt like you know, and plus. Back in the day, like uh, Tiffany in real life had a boyfriend, and sometimes he'd be there in the audience. And he was an older guy, uh, you know. And, and when I say older, he could have been like a year older or two years older. But when you're a teenager, like you're 16, someone's 18, you're like, wow, there's a man sitting right there. Uh, so he was off there was, California Dreams. What's that? He was off the show California Dreams. 
Oh yeah, was he really? His name was Eddie. Eddie was on California Dreams? No answer. That's what she said in 92. Oh, God. <laughs> 92 is a good year. Uh, but yeah, so it was, it was sometimes awkward to be kissing someone's girlfriend uh, while they were there. But again, we go back to Tiffany and I are still so close now. Um, and she doesn't remember a thing about the show either. She would never remember. I'm gonna go back to LA with this ammunition about 92, and I'm gonna blow her mind. It's gonna be amazing. Thank you. What's your name? Hi, it's Julie. Hey, Julie finally made it. Now we can clap. Julie finally made it. She tried to cut the line. No, that was an accident. Last time there wasn't a line at the last Sorry. Those people were very committed. They sat there the whole time. Um, so here's my question, and it's, I can't figure out how to word it in my head, but like, most child stars who, like, let's say like Daniel Radcliffe, he's recently said like, he wouldn't return to Harry Potter right now because he spent the last decade trying to brush off Harry Potter. So like, in that aspect, like, was it hard to return to Zach Morris when you spent the last, you know, two decades doing these other roles, not as Zach Morris, and now you're Zach Morris again. So yeah. it's that hard to, to jump back into that. I, th I think with Daniel, I, I, I completely understand where Daniel's coming from, because there's a point where you, you're you only known for one role, and you're trying as an actor, because our, our job as an actor is to play a character, and somebody just said to me today, they're like, oh, you on Mixed Dish. I didn't know the first season that that was you, and I'm like, that's the whole point. That's what we do as actors. We we try to create these characters, and it's really hard on television. In film, it's a little bit easier. You can kind of push the envelope, but on television, um, it's it's more of a, a, it's more of a brand, right? You're you're representing a brand, you're a network, and stuff. So they kind of it, it's sometimes difficult to play characters on network television because. Um, they, you know, they, they hired Daniel or they hired some other actor and they want that actor's name to, to draw an audience. Um, so I like hearing that I was on Mixed Dish in the first season somebody didn't recognize it was me. I like that I was on Pitch and they didn't recognize that I was that guy on Pitch, uh, which was one of my favorite characters that I've, that I've gotten to play. Um, thank you, I wish, I wish we were still doing it. Um, uh, and I understand how Daniel says that, because Daniel, it's, it's probably been in the last decade that he's done one of those films, so I understand the position that he's been in. But for me, it was so long, right? I, I think when I finally accepted, not that I didn't accept it, but I, when I was...